Hi, this is Keith Furrow, the trust name of real estate along the Gulf Coast. Today we want to talk about something that's unique and we hear about the term wetlands. What exactly does that mean? And then typically you see pieces of property that's got water on it. You say, well, that's wetlands. Maybe, maybe not. You got properties dry. Well, that's good to build on. Maybe, maybe not. Quick story. Uh, I lived, I raised my kids on Pensacola Beach. And I remember we had a house after we had moved to and it was dry. All behind it was dry. You could see all the homes and neighbors around it. But it wasn't, there was no fences, but everything was basically seagrass and this kind of thing. Well, we went through this time where we had heavy rains. And it was interesting. And within three days, there was this much water, like a little pond all around there. It lasted about a week. There were fish, there were frogs, there was nature, there was, and I, I was blown away. And at that experience, I understood that just because something's dry most of the time, because it can be dry 51 weeks a year, 364 days, but nature needed that and nature was smart. So now what are, how does that apply to me? I'm, I'm going to buy a property. Now, typically wetlands is a misnomer because wetlands is a slang word that represents water or areas that have water. Jurisdictional is really what it means. Jurisdictional means someone other than you would have jurisdiction over it of some type, some use. Now you have the Army Corps of Engineers. You have the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. You've got the county. You've got cities. You've got subdivisions. And a lot of times, the, the rules will be in conflict. One will have this much buffer zone. The other one will have this much plus another five feet or 10 feet. The idea here is they're trying to protect the animals, trying to protect nature because green space matters. It matters as far as the cost. It matters as far as water having a place to go. It matters as far as oxygen and air and quality of life. We all know the difference between a complete concrete jungle and an area that's got parks. It does matter and green space is important. Now, what are the different types of jurisdictional? It's probably a lot more than I'll ever know, but typically you've got for the animals, uh, could be for a gopher tortoise, could, tortoise. could be uh, because a lot of animals live in a gopher tortoise's uh, den. It could be for uh, the soil types because the black dark soil doesn't drain water as fast. It takes longer for it to go through and it filters it. You've got sandy areas, typically the sandy areas, not on the beach, the sandy areas typically drain faster. So that's typically not a jurisdictional area unless it's on the beach. So, and then you've got, so you've got plants, you've got uh, soil types, and then you've got the water itself, how much water is going to be there and, and how often that water is there. So those are some different things. Now you've got water that can be temporarily, you've got water that stays there all the time. Now let's say you had a piece of land and you and it was dug out in the 50s or 60s and grandpa went in there and he dug all that out and used it for whatever and it wasn't it was not a jurisdictional area and then you decide to build on it later day well at that point once you've dug it out its current use is could be regulated and the army but it might not be the army corps it might be the, uh, the florida department of environmental protection it could have to do with a watershed a stream i've seen situations where one lot affected, they said, a stream two miles away. I don't know. Um, this is why you have to put up those little silt fences and things. And I'm about keeping the environment nice. I mean, I'm in the building development business and I'm a real estate broker, but I, I love, you know, the environment. So I'm, a, I, nature matters. So it is important. But those watersheds, you could be at this side and it affects the bay. You could be on this side, it affects the sound different rules, different ideas. You could have certain types of water uh, drain into uh, for a golf course. For example, golf courses oftentimes don't have water that I'd want to catch fish in. Why? Because of all the chemicals that goes into the into it. And then they don't dump right into the sound. They go through a process where it has to filter. Very important to kind of understand that. And so it takes professional to understand, uh, feel free to call us. We'll guide you the right resources and we can help you determine if your property falls into that. And don't be caught up just because somebody's building on it doesn't mean they're doing it legally because we don't, we do everything by the book and I recommend you do the same. So this is Keith Rowe, Keith Rowe Associates. Have a great day.